Welcome to this week's Money Meadows podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these turbulent times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the low-cost precious metals dealer voted best in the U.S., Money Meadows Exchange. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap podcast. I'm Mike Leeson. Coming up, Frank Holmes of U.S. Global Investors joins me to share his comments on the main difference between gold and cryptocurrencies, the fallout that will likely occur in the financial markets if Congress and the president can't push through much-needed deregulation and tax cuts, and thoughts on the environment for the precious metals in the months ahead. Don't miss a wonderful interview with Frank Holmes coming up after this week's market update. More new records for the stock market and a rising U.S. dollar index are combining to weigh on the precious metals markets once again. But metals prices are still managing to hold their own, closing Thursday down just slightly for the week. Gold prices currently check in at $1,272 an ounce, down 0.7% since last Friday's close. Silver is down a mere 0.1% this week to trade at $16.70. Similar story for the Platinum Group metals, which are relatively flat as well. Platinum prices come in at $915 per ounce, while Palladium is trading up to $942 as of today's recording, meaning Palladium has traded above Platinum for more than a full week now. In conventional markets, optimism is reaching manic levels. This week, better-than-forecast American factory orders and renewed hopes for tax reform helped boost the dollar and equity markets. On Thursday, the House of Representatives passed a budget resolution designed to help pave the way for the GOP Senate to act on taxes. But after the Senate Budget Committee gets its hands on the bill, it could look quite different than the version sent to it by the House. There are vested political interests who are opposed to any major tax simplification. The tax preparation industry, for one. President Trump has called out H&R Block by name. Then there are special interests peculiar to individual representatives and senators. Some House Republicans refuse to support the tax reform blueprint because it eliminates the federal deduction for state and local taxes. It is most valuable for taxpayers who live in high tax jurisdictions. The federal deduction serves as a way for these jurisdictions to spread the costs of their high tax policies to taxpayers living in all states. Those of us in the sound money camp would like to see the discriminatory taxation of precious metals eliminated. Under current law, gains on bullion are subjected to a collectibles rate of up to 28%. Never mind the fact that low premium bullion products aren't actually collectibles. The real question is why the IRS doesn't treat long-term gains on tangible assets the same way as long-term gains on paper assets such as stocks. There's no good answer, of course. Other than Wall Street and banking lobbyists wield far more power on Capitol Hill than advocates for precious metals and tangible assets. And the reality is that any taxation on the monetary metals is unjust. The U.S. Constitution deems gold and silver coins as money, and assessing taxes on the exchange of one money for another has little basis. If precious metals holders have to pay taxes on the so-called gains they have enjoyed versus the depreciating Federal Reserve note, then they should be allowed to write off the losses they suffer when the Federal Reserve notes they hold lose purchasing power. But until the situation changes, at least you can shelter bullion transactions from punitive taxation through a precious metals IRA. Money Metals Exchange specialists can help you get the ball rolling on setting up a precious metals IRA and funding it with physical gold, silver, platinum, or palladium that is stored in a secure vault, such as one operated by Money Metals Depository. It will be politically impossible to untangle all the loopholes and eliminate all the unfairness from the tax code. But it just might be possible for the GOP Senate to reach a consensus on modest reductions in the corporate tax rate and readjusting the individual tax brackets downward for at least some taxpayers. But before you get excited about any tax cuts and their potential boost to the economy, it's important to keep in mind that Congress and the Trump administration have already agreed they will be revenue neutral. That means no actual cuts in tax revenues to the government. The big assumption behind tax rate cuts is that they will generate greater economic growth and thus expand the tax base. But the economy will go into recession sooner or later. Even a historically normal 25% bear market decline in the S&P 500 could be disastrous for pension funds, the economy, and the federal budget. 
Deficit hawks aren't convinced that all the rosy economic projections by House Speaker Paul Ryan and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin will come true. Skeptics warn that budget deficits could rise by hundreds of billions of dollars in the years ahead, given the systematic unwillingness of Congress to cut spending. The bottom line on tax reform is that it won't necessarily be bullish for the dollar. Traders who are bidding up greenbacks and selling precious metals today could be making a big mistake that they will regret tomorrow. Well now, without further delay, let's get right to this week's exclusive interview. It is my privilege now to welcome in Frank Holmes, CEO and Chief Investment Officer at U.S. Global Investors. Mr. Holmes has received various honors over the years, including being named America's Best Fund Manager for 2016 by The Mining Journal. He is also the co-author of the book, The Gold Watcher, Demystifying Gold Investing, and is a regular guest on CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business, as well as right here on the Money Metals Podcast. Frank, welcome back, and thanks for joining us again. How are you today? Excellent. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Well, to start out here, Frank, I, I know you recently attended and spoke at the Denver Gold Show, and I always like to talk to insiders like yourself following those sorts of events because you can always glean some good insights on the mood of the industry and how things are really going in the precious metals community. Uh, now, the, the mining industry is, has taken a pretty good beating over the last few years, and it continues to struggle a bit, even as we seem to be in a new bull cycle that began in late 2015. You've got your new gold fund now, Go AU. So you, you've got lots of insights into the mining industry and, and, and know uh, lots of gold bugs. So, so what did you glean from the conference, Frank? What is, was the mood in general? Give us some highlights there, if you would. Well, I, I think my presentation was well received when I explained how the quant world and data mining and these other what they call alternative investment data research companies are providing new insight the way investing is taking place and understanding that paradigm shift on the data collection and that analysts, a lot of their old reports on net asset value are irrelevant and they're just not, they're not relevant to picking stocks today. And you have to go with the forces of physics, either as electromagnetic uh, rebounding to the mean is a cheap stock and math says it'll rebound or has strong momentum. And you can take a universe of 88 gold stocks and take it down to 28 and far outperform the GDX or GDXJ. Using data that was foreign to a lot of these analysts and recognizing. The other thing I think was in commenting was gold uh, is in the, this whole thing on Bitcoin. Is it a comp competition for bullion? It is not. First of all, without electricity, Bitcoin is not worth any money. It needs electricity. Gold is always gold. It conducts electricity. And uh, it will always have its materiality for currency in addition to being jewelry. But I think what's really important is to recognize that it's so much easier to this idea of crowdfunding to go and open up an, ex an exchange and trade 24 7 all these different currencies uh, all around the world than it is to open a brokerage account. And I think that this uh, excessive regulations is basically seeing people migrate over to angel investing, crowdfunding such as in the cryptocurrencies, etc. And, and I think that that's the bigger danger is to overall investing and trading in the capital markets. So they're the comments that I made and uh, that seem to have come back with many uh, uh, written messages to me regarding the, the quants and how they're changing the landscape. But I think the other part that's important for your listeners is that there's 1,100 people there. Now, they don't allow investment bankers in. Research analysts, traders, CEOs, gold analysts from buy and sell side, they're allowed to participate, and there were 1,100. The week before, there was a big event for the juniors, but this event is the premier event of the world, and I, and I was impressed with it. And the conversation is looking for companies that are going to be taken over. What's the probability? Because the seniors are desperate for future production, and where's that growth going to come from? Because they're just not finding the gold as fast as they're mining it. So the new months of the world have to go and strike deals like they did with Continental in Colombia to get a foothold into high-grade, big geographic footprints. So I, I thought that was interesting. I think that in the next 12 months, there's going to be lots of M&A work. And the other part was the royalty companies seem to get a new sort of a respect for how they're positioned in the capital markets uh, in, the, in that gold space. 
Yeah, it definitely sounds like there's uh, there is a wave of optimism there and uh, some some good things ahead. Now, I wanted to uh, kind of get back to some of the cryptocurrency conversation here. Uh, your firm, Frank U.S. Global Investors, recently made an investment in HIVE blockchain uh, technologies, and you have been appointed chairman of the board there. Uh, given you are heavily involved in the cryptocurrency space now, we'd we'd like to get your take on a topic of growing interest in the metals community. You alluded to this a moment ago, but Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin in particular, have been seen by many as another form of honest money. You've you've obviously maybe shot a little bit of a hole in in, in what it is that uh, it's needed to to continue the cryptocurrency world, that being electricity. But since you're a fan, at least in part, of of both metals and blockchains, what are your thoughts on how metals might fit in with this emerging technology, Frank? Well, let's just focus on this emerging technology. We go back to the Internet, and it was actually very boring when it first came out because it was very slow. And uh, it used to be a joke that it was just porn and dark things. And now it's fast porn. No, I'm kidding. But the, the real <laughs> catalyst for the uh, Internet exploding in usage were emails, uh, AOL, and long before Yahoo came out to give you free email. Uh, and, and then people saw the, the, the incredible capacity for this, this, this channel of distribution of information. Well, I think that the Bitcoin and Ethereum are doing that for blockchain technology. Now, there's a huge scramble to be able to apply this, that you'll be able to trade stocks 24-7. And when I was doing my research, and I went to the largest cryptocurrency event that used to be where the gold show used to be held in New York at the Marriott, I was just shocked to see how many young people were there, many more than ever when gold was peaking. And, and two is that they weren't drinking uh, scotch and whiskey at the bar and beer. They were drinking uh, Pepsi and coffee. And, and that really threw me off to just watch those young people and how they're looking at it. And then to find out that the keynote speaker was a CEO of Fidelity. Fidelity is a massive multi-trillion dollar asset management company, and they have all their employees on Bitcoin. They have a wallet, and you can buy goods in, in their store. And, and seeing that she's the keynote and, and that the New York Stock Exchange, when I was launching GoAU, they were commenting that they had put money into Coinbase, along with USAA in San Antonio. So Coinbase, you can open an account so easily, and they will now let the, your, your 10,000 or 50,000 or 100,000 of coins show up as an asset uh, over all your portfolio at USAA, and they'll let you do that at Fidelity. So I said, well, there's something really that's not mainstream. And then in the summer, it came out in the Wall Street Journal that Fidelity is doing it. But really, it didn't seem to captivate a lot of people's interest. And I think the big part of the New York Stock Exchange is just their worry of being Uberized the way taxi cabs were, were having stock trading uh, 24-7 and, and a lot cheaper. So I think that that's the big trend. And along, I was trying to launch a, a cryptocurrency ETF or a product with that, and I just kept running into cul-de-sacs. Uh, I had to back that car out, back that truck out. It didn't matter if it was the U.S., the SEC, or Canada, uh, with the OSC. I mean, they're just so consumed that AML supersedes, even though you can track Bitcoin, supersedes anything else. So that's why I've not seen anything come out directly where you can trade Bitcoin into an ETF. So I've been working on this, and then all of a sudden I heard from my friend Frank Schuster saying, look, we had this deal. Do you know much about the space? I said, oh, yes, I've been working on it, and I just keep running in a cul-de-sacs. And he said, well, why don't you explore? And I explored, and I said, you know what? I'll, I'll become your third uh, biggest shareholder, and I will go on the board uh, because I think that Hive is so special and unique because it's the mining business. And, and the company behind Hive is Genesis Mining, and Genesis Mining is the largest cryptocurrency miner in the world. They have a million people give them 500 bucks a year, and, they, and one of the things I learned was that you when you do mining of cryptocurrency, you need to have cheap energy, like two cents a kilowatt hour. So you find that a lot of these big uh, data centers are in Iceland. Uh, where it's cool and you have cheap electricity. Google is there, Facebook is there, and so is Genesis. Uh, and you need to have computer graphic cards because the processing power to validate a transaction. And so you found that in, in NVIDIA, stock has taken off because the cryptocurrency companies like Genesis have been massive buyers of their computer graphics cards. And so with that, I said, you mean we're going to be investing in a company that's mining and validating transactions all over the world, and we create 
new coins, fresh coins, mint coins, virgin coins, however you want to characterize them. We are not trafficking on the Silk Road. We are not buying and selling a, a coin that could have been tainted, etc. No, we're, we're the creator because we validate transactions, and you get paid every time you validate a blockchain transaction. So I became extremely excited about this opportunity, and uh, so far, you know, we've made uh, for our shareholders more than 500% of our money. That's fantastic. Uh, now, I'd like to get your take on the U.S. dollar. The dollar had a miserable performance through the first eight months of the year and bottomed in early September at 91 and a half. The greenback then bounced and has enjoyed a very good rally since then. What is uh, driving this rally in your view? And are you expecting the dollar to keep moving higher in the months ahead, Frank? Well, historically, it does get a bit of a rally going to year end. Uh, that's one. Two is the five-year government bond. Uh, the five-year government bond is is positive now, the yield. So the, the in CPI number is 1.9, and you just take whatever the government is trying to entice you to buy their five-year government bond, subtract the CPI number, it recalibrates every month, and it gives you a good idea for where fund flows are going, where real rates return. And whenever the five-year government bond and the two-year government bond are negative, gold is positive. And so we went from a 1.4... 1.5 five-year government bond to 1.93. Now, it's just slightly positive, but that was enough to sort of have the dollar rally and gold come off uh, in the past month. But I, I think that um, unless you really get change, you get uh, fiscal change, trying to get the tax code streamlined and trying to get other parts of the legislation body in its beltway to streamline regulations, we need to have... The TSC preferred how you you can fly much more quickly now, rather than those two-hour waits to fly in it, to go and catch your flight. You know, most people in San Antonio were driving to Houston rather than going wait two hours for an hour flight. And so you're seeing now this TSC preferred. That's just streamlining processes, and this has to be done for the movement of money, for opening trading accounts, for opening up investment accounts, etc. If we don't get those things, we're going to have to have negative real interest rates to keep the economy going. Or you're going to have to have a very weak dollar to drive exports. And I think that Trump has been a master disruptor. He's so disruptive to the Beltway Party, which is the regulatory regime that's been there, professional uh, regulatory. And I've listened to other people like Bernanke spoke about this, the difficulty for Jimmy Carter and Trump to take on the Beltway Party. But he's different. And so he's trying to push for this streamline of regulations. If he can, rates can trade higher. And I think that the dollar will just trade with the real interest rates relative to the rest of the world. But I, I remain very positive on gold. Uh, it's amazing to see how well gold has done this year. Uh, the gold stocks had a great run until the GDXJ blew up. Basically, uh, they captured 95% of all fund flows. Therefore, they had to be have concentrated only 20, more than 20 companies, 20%. means they had to do a forced takeover. They had to back out of that one. And they blew out $3 billion. They brought in $5 billion over 12 months. And then they did an exit in only a matter of weeks, $3 billion. And that really damaged uh, the bid side and bruise people. I try to, it's, it's like getting hit with my Mike Tyson. You just don't heal quickly when he hits you. And it's the same thing with the, the gold stocks. But I think there's some just fabulous gold stocks out there that are ripe to be taken over, that have very strong positive cash flow. The weaker dollar in, in the U.S. and the higher gold prices, there's very strong margins for companies like Klondex. Yeah, certainly going to be interesting as we uh, go towards the latter part of the year here to see what might be sustained in this uh, correction in, in gold or if it can rebound and, and get back to where it was maybe a month ago or so. Uh, yeah, We did have a, a good first half of the year in, in the metals, but the markets obviously have hit some of those uh, headwinds here recently, rising dollar and so forth that you alluded to. Uh, if you would, give us your bull case for metals in the near term, and then also if you would, maybe a bear case as well, and then uh, kind of expand more on uh, which side you're betting on as we begin to wrap up here? Well, there's the two drivers for gold, love trade and fear trade. And the fear trade is dominates the psyche of Americans. Uh, and the same thing with Europeans, and it's predominantly negative real interest rates. So whenever the government has to monetize most of their debt and, and basically negative real interest rates, you're losing money and buying their government bonds, gold does well. 
Uh, I don't think that they can raise rates significantly without massive streamlining of regulations, and the government is doing everything to try to stop Trump from uh, doing that. So I think we're going to end up still living with negative interest rates. Now, the other positive part is, is that for the U.S. is the dollar is down, but the exports are up. So we have a strong industrial base and is showing up in PMI, that's Purchasing Manufacturers Index, which is a forward-looking index. It's not like GDP, which is looking out the rearview mirror. This is like looking with headlights, looking down six months. And the one month is above the three months, and that's really positive for global growth. So I remain positively constructive towards it. What could derail it? North Korea could derail it. China's policies could derail it. Um, and I think that if rates were to surge uh, dramatically in the U.S., that could derail it. But I don't think it's going to happen. It's a, we're in a very constructive mode, and it's a great opportunity for stock picking. I just spoke at a conference in Vancouver yesterday, and I commented on, um, by the way, I commented on Hive. I was asked, and I said, you know, if you're a value investor, uh, Hive is extremely overvalued. But if you are a first mover advantage and the first public company where, where funds can go buy and get exposure to crypto mining, it is not. It's like Tesla. It's like Amazon. Uh, they will always trade at lofty valuations. And so it's extremely attractive that way when you look at it as being first mover advantage. Well, that's uh, great stuff as usual. Thanks, uh, as always, for joining us. It's a real honor to, to hear your thoughts, and we appreciate your time, as always. Now, before we let you go, uh, please tell our listeners a little bit more about your firm and your services, and then also mention the Frank Talk blog so people can learn more about that if they're not already checking it out. Well, we are usfunds.com makes it so easy. Just go to usfunds.com, sign up for Investor Alert. It's right in the middle of the page. And we write every week, and we do like a game film analysis, three strengths for weaknesses for last week and opportunities and threats that can come out next week, sort of forward and looking like game film and looking back. And uh, Frank Talk is my global travels, and I try to be insightful and, and learn about uh, how we've applied quant math, uh, what's called quantamentals, to stock picking. And uh, especially we launched our uh, GoGo uh, Canadian Gold uh, ETF, and we've launched one here in the U.S., which we're really proud of because the 10-year index, uh, based on those smart factors, outperforms the GDXJ 94% of the time in rolling 12-month periods. So we think that uh, GoAU, is a, is, we'll write about it, we'll tell you about the changes, and uh, we also have unique products like Jets, which is also an ETF listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, it's uh, great stuff. Uh, certainly the uh, Go Gold uh, Fund is uh, is looking very good from what I've uh, been reading about, obviously performing just as you were hoping it would, and uh, continued success there. Uh, we always appreciate it. Good luck with the other endeavors that you have going on, and keep up the good work on those market commentaries, and we'll certainly look forward to our next conversation. Take care, Frank. Take care, my friend. Well, that will do it for this week. Thanks again to Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors and manager of the recently launched GoAU Gold Fund. For more information, the site is usfunds.com. Be sure to check out the previously mentioned Frank Talk blog while you're there for some of the best market commentary you'll find anywhere on gold and other related topics. Again, you can find all of that at usfunds.com. And you can also visit goauetf.com for more information on that new gold fund. And check back here next Friday for our next weekly market wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson with Money Metals Exchange. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes for answers to all of your questions or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds. Call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Or you can lock in your order online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com or call 1-800-800-1865.